this lecture I want to talk about state space models for dynamical systems, specifically in structural dynamics. Well, first of all, let's talk about what is a dynamical system. A dynamical system is a system that has a response that changes with time. But not only that, it also has a memory, which basically means that the response at future times depend on the response at present time and possibly past times as well. Now, within that context, we can talk about first order representation of dynamical systems. If we have a system that exhibits what we call autonomous behavior, which basically means that the system has a state and a state is simply the smallest set of variables in a dynamical system that exhibit autonomous behavior. So that means that if you know the state at a certain time t equals to t naught you can predict the state for future times, t greater than t naught. And if you can find that smallest set of variables, then you've got a state vector. And that allows you to represent the system as an autonomous system. Now in structural dynamics, we have our equation of motion. And so we, we have to postulate a set of variables such that if we know that set of variables, we can write an autonomous equation. Now, you might think, well, maybe we can select Q so meaning all the displacements at all the degrees of freedom, if we know that, then maybe we can determine the future behavior. Turns out you can't. Or if you select velocity alone, that's also not enough. You need to select the state as joint displacement and velocities. If you know the displacement and you know the velocity of a structure at all the degrees of freedom, you are going to be able to predict the displacement at the and the velocity at all degrees of freedom for all future times. And that's what I'm going to show right here. If you select x as q and q dot stacked, so basically now x has a size which is equal to two times the number of degrees of freedom of the system. You have displacement and velocity stacked. The derivative of that x, x dot, is simply q dot and q double dot. Well, q dot it simply could be equal to its it's equal to itself and q double dot if you solve from this equation right here you can solve for q double dot q double dot is minus m to the minus 1 k q minus m to the minus 1 c q dot by definition that's an autonomous behavior because if we know q and q dot we can write x dot equals a function of x which is what we had right here right x dot is a function of x here we have x dot equals a function of x furthermore we can write that in matrix form so if we can, we write it as a matrix, zero, identity, minus m to the minus 1k, minus m to the minus 1c, times x. 
and from here we obtain x dot as a vector equals to a a matrix times x vector so summarizing if we have our equation of motion and we select the state vector as q and q dot we arrive at x dot equals ax and we have our state because we can define autonomous behavior where a is zero identity m to the minus one k m to the minus one c now that's okay but how does that help us well that helps us because once i write my equation of motion in this form i can show very easily that the solution to that equation the exact solution is this right here x dot equals e to the a t x naught and x naught is the initial condition at t equals to zero if you want to write it more generally you can write it in this form where x is equal to e to the a t minus t naught assuming that you are starting at a time that is not zero it's just some initial time t naught and you know the state at that time now keep in mind that we are dealing with a somewhat of a new quantity here e to the a t so this is the exponential of a match of a matrix remember we define our a matrix here and so this is the exponential of a matrix how do you take the exponential of a matrix well analytically <clears throat> if you want to think about it the easiest way to think about it is to use a taylor series if you write e to the at, you see that it's a series in terms of powers of a and t, obviously. And these terms right here in the bottom are simply two factorial. This is uh, this is three factorial, etc. Right. So there is a. Then the next one would be a to the fourth t. To the fourth divided by four factorial etc this can be solved in MATLAB now MATLAB doesn't solve it this way it doesn't necessarily solve it analytically it uses a numerical method to solve it and the command to find the exponential of a matrix is EXPM in MATLAB keep in mind that e to the a is not equal to each component of a exponent right this is this is not true i just want to put that out there so that you don't think that it's that simple it's actually more than that here i'm showing you a simple two by two matrix where a is zero identity zero one minus 100 minus 10 right here and here I'm showing the percent error between the series and the number of terms used in the series, right? So the series that we're using is, um, if we say here, I <clears throat> from zero to N, basically what we have is E to the I divided by I factorial. Maybe we should use K just to not confuse things with complex numbers, right? So remembering that, depending on how many terms we use, we get a closer and closer approximation. And so you can see that this um, approximation, this series, doesn't necessarily converge uniformly it it kind of oscillates a little bit and then at some point it it reaches a good level of convergence um, so you need you know I think in this case is something like 40 terms to get a really nice approximation now what happens if you have uh, some 
external loading acting on the system. Can you write it in state space form? Uh, yes, you can. You simply use the same definition of state, Q, Q dot. You write your equations just like before, and in order to add this term, right, this term comes in here. You can do the math and see th that it does work out to the actual equation of motion. The beauty of this is that now you have a nice first order equation that looks like this. X dot equals AX plus B P of T. B is a matrix. In this case, it's this right here, right? This is B and this is A and it that equation can be solved exactly and the answer is this term right here the first term is the autonomous part it's simply the initial condition propagated in time initial condition at t equals to zero and the second part is the effect of p of t. And that term is a, a multidimensional convolution. So it's basically convolution like what we define in, in single degree of freedom systems, but now the impulse response is not just a scalar function, it's a matrix function and it's e to the a t minus tau b and i will leave it there for now the next uh video i'm gonna discuss how to solve this numerically so that you don't have to convolve uh, this thing every time there are some approximations that you can do on p of t that allow you to get very cl very accurate results for the response state x and as a matter of fact they work out uh, to be um, recursive so you don't you, you compute it going step by step like other numerical methods <laughs>